Okay, let's plug it in. Moment of truth. So, the very first thing we need is obviously the panel. We're going to be using a push-in terminal block, 20 nerf, to get our feet into the panel. We have the life, neutral, and earth on top, as you can see. We get an unterminated power cord that is going to be our feet in, our mains in, into the panel. And that is going directly on the top of the twin nerf terminal block. It's a push-in connector, which means that you can use a screwdriver to open a port and plug it in. And these are stranded cores, so give it a little twist before pushing it in to make sure it's a nice connection. Pull tight, everything's secure in place, and we can put it in. End brackets, just to make sure that things are going to stay in place and they're not going to move left and right. And also a little bit of a spacer between the next device. Now we need our RCBO for protection. A little hint on the side, there's a strip line for the cable for the RCBO that you're going to need. You have a live in, neutral in, live out and neutral out once you've protected the circuit. So let's put it in place. We're obviously going to need a little bit of cable management because the pushing terminal block has feet in on top and then out on the bottom. Strip to length. Open a port, neutral goes in first. A little bit of cable management, obviously required. Need a short piece of cable. I can go between the RCBO and the live in from the terminal block. Screw it down in place. And we're all ready. Another end bracket, just to keep it nice and tight. Next thing is a 230 to 24 volt transformer or power supply. And this is a one amp one. One amp is gonna be an absolute overkill for this panel, but to be fair, the whole panel is gonna be an overkill. So why not? Then we're going out from the RCBO, neutral in. Then we're going to put the live wire in. Screw it down nice and tight. And then from here, we're going out to the live and neutral on the 24 volt power supply on the main side. Strip it to length. Strip the cable, just enough. And then we connect it neutral to neutral and live to life. Obviously, they don't need to be in this color coding, depending on which country you're from. But in the UK, that makes a little bit more sense. We have the mains feed in. We have that going out to the RCBO supply. And then from the RCBO out, we're going to the 24 volt power supply. There we go. Now we've got pushing terminal blocks. Again, an overkill. These are interconnected ones, which means that all of the connections inside are linked. And we're going to be using them just to be able to show you better distribution. Get some more cable. Red and black is usually the recommendation for 24 volt cable within the panel. And then on the left side, we have the plus, and then on the right side, we have the minus with 24 volts. That is obviously going to go to the mini server, and any other 24 volt extensions that you might have in the panel just makes distribution a little bit easier. Recommendation is a solid core cable going into the mini server just because it's going to be easier to put it in the pushing connectors. Strip it to length. And that's ready to be pushed in place. Orange to orange, white to white. Super nice and simple, plus and minus. Then we need two M brackets to keep the mini server in place. In this case, the panel itself is going to keep it in place anyway as soon as we put the front cover, but it's still nice to have. Of course, we forgot the RG45 happens. So let's take the bottom end rail out, make sure we feed the cable in. And the other side of that obviously connects to our router to get us connected to the Loxon app and Loxon config. There we go. Nice and pretty. Let's plug it in and give it a test. Light's flashing. That's a good sign. Mini server is initializing, so we're good to go. Let's go to config and see how that works. That's Loxon config. We want to create a new project. Pick the mini server you have. 
go to the top left and search for your mini server. Click on it. And you'll see that the mini server is going to identify itself on the left hand side. Now the default credentials are admin admin on a brand new mini server. Don't need to remember password, connect. And there we go, we are connected. I tend to change the name of the project. Change the name of the mini server. Save the file in. And it's going to request the password. Ideally, you want to put some very secure password in place because otherwise the mini server is not going to let you connect online. If you were to use the admin admin credentials, you are not going to be able to connect to the mini server remotely. You're not going to be able to connect to the app remotely. And there's going to be just a lot of issues. Save in, say yes. You see the mini server starting to initialize. Green flashing on the left, always a good sign. And there we go, locally connected, program is identical. So let's save in the file on the PC, give it a name. Save it in place. And now the file is saved, program is identical. The mini server itself is flashing green and we're all good to go.